I've let the masking fluid dry and I've let the, the paint dry over top of it. Now we're ready to go ahead and take out the masking fluid and give us our white areas. And you can do this just with your finger or you can use a gum eraser and it comes out. And we have these great white lines here now. What I'm going to do next, okay, and I hope that you've been able to have a great insight on everything, okay, because it's very important to know all the beginning things of watercolor, the essential tools that you need, because it's such a great medium to work with. And you've practiced at home and you're ready to begin. With all that that I've introduced, let me begin a piece by using almost all of the strokes that I've showed you and the technique that we used that'll be very simple for you to practice on at home. So we're going to have fun, all right? We're going to have fun doing this now. Okay, we're going to start with an exercise to get the feel of this water which is extremely important in the fill of your brushes. I'm going to use a flat brush on some particular areas. And this is a good thing for you to work on at home, have fun and practice because it actually shows you how your water is going to react to your paints. Sometimes some of us get too much water, sometimes we don't, so it's very important to practice. And when you're actually working on a real painting, it's always good to have another sheet of paper beside you as practice to get your hand going uh, and to see how much water is on there. This is going to be a very simple picture to work on. Uh, I like to work with a limited palette, but we're going to work with a little more colors than that. Uh, I'm going to work on a piece that's a very special picture of mine. It was taken in, in by a special friend uh, in Tuscany, and I loved it so much that I had done it in pastel. The original picture, if you really want to look at it, is much darker. But I loved the sky, and I loved the, the foreground of it, so I turned it into my own painting. And it's all too often artists do this, where they just love a piece that they have done, and they want to redo that piece. And so what do we do? I go to my watercolors. I get a completely total different effect and image with it, and it's very loose, and it's, it's a wonderful feeling to do. You know, all of our paintings become friends, okay? And so sometimes when they're not around anymore, we like to try to recreate them. This is a good painting for you to work on at home and practice with me, okay? Because this one will help you with the feel of the flow of, of, of the water coming down. I have already done uh, the masking fluid on here. It's uh, pretty dry right now, so I can go ahead and start working on this. Now, I'm going to fully load my brush, like I showed, talked to you before. And I'm going to come across like this. All right. And it's nice working with the clouds like this. I, I use a variety of blues in my sky. You have to remember when you're working on a sky, and it's very important to know this, uh, your sky moves from west to east. So when you have clouds, they're always moving that way. Your stroke should be from left to right because they're moving that way. And if you start going an opposite way, somebody will know that it's the wrong way that the cloud is going. So right in here, and I very seldom am going to change this brush. I'm working with a, a number eight, uh, three eighths, and you can see this is a darker cloud in here. And my fluid is dry right in here, so this is wonderful because it'll be white in that area when I'm ready to remove that. Now this has a little bit of striations of the sky that's coming down this way. 
Are you getting the feeling of this in him? Are you working along with me? It's a wonderful picture. It's a very good picture to work on at the beginning uh, of learning your watercolors because you can see how it'll bleed. And remember I talked to you about charging? Well, this is part of the charging area in here where you're blending the, some of the colors together. Now, the sky, because I love my violets and lavenders, and believe it or not, a sky always has violet in it. Now, I've worked about through this area now, if you noticed, I had no pencil marks on here because I really didn't sketch it. Uh, this is a very simple painting to work with. If you remember your thirds, I always have everything into a third. I know by looking at this, there is my sky, and I can come down here and very quickly just put in my foreground like this. You do not have to trace any paper uh, for a sketch from your sketchbook on this particular piece. I just have a few little lines. The less lines you have in watercolor, the better it is. Uh, but not saying that you don't have to get completely detailed. That's why I think this is a, a good exercise for everybody to, to, to work on. Now remember, the closer you get in the front, okay, the darker things are. In the back, they fade out. And it goes with every medium that you work in, even the sky. It always is like that. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> and what's interesting about the uh, masking fluid is that because it's laid on with a brush, when it's removed, you still have the same little striations of the brush marks on there, so that it blends in. It's not like one big hole. It blends in with your, your work. Sometimes it takes a bit of practice to get used to the drying time and how quickly things... And don't worry if you make a mistake. You know, there... Art is made for that, okay? It's supposed to be fun, and that's how we learn. If you do have, do have something that you're not comfortable with, all you have to do is take a, a little bit of water. You can blot it out with your water. You can even spray it with a spray bottle. You can add more water if you want it lighter. And yes, the drying time after this is done will make the bubble go down flat because this paper has already been sized and that's why it was sized. Now let's go to the mountains back in here. And very much like my palette, the, the blues and the lavenders, those tones, are most of the pieces that I, I like to work on. But I have recently gone into some oranges, which has surprised everybody, which is depending on what area that you're at. I had a wonderful time visiting the Southwest for the first time in my life. And the sky and the scenery are very orange, very browns. So I came back with lots of great pictures and started to work in that. And it took me a while to get used to it because that wasn't my palette in life. But I love it. Now I'm coming down to the foreground. And I'm going to use a, a rounder brush for that. Now we're going to come down to our foreground, and usually on a silhouette, we don't use black. We mix our red and our blue to give it more of a purple. I will add some black, which is the non-color, and Valerani has those in her beautiful watercolors. 
Uh, it works well uh, for when I'm outlining right in this particular area here. So that things are not too black in the silhouette, I will come back later and add some purples and lavenders to that. We don't want that to be too distinctive. And so hence I use my violets in here. And let's get a full, it helps you give a good liner in doing your foregrounds this way. This is a fun part of the painting to me. And this is very good practice for you, so I certainly hope you be working with this at home. Uh, this is using uh, the medium-sized tip uh, of your brush, so it'll give you the feel of getting a little more intricate line by putting this in this way here. I'm going to put the brush this over. And I'll come down with some of my purples, my blues, and I am going to mix it on here with my palette. Okay, bring it on down here. And for this area, I probably would want to switch to a lighter brush. This is good for outlining this one here. <coughs> and bring some water down on here. It's learning this water flow, I think, is probably what scares a lot of people, but it's not. It becomes easier than you think it could be. I don't want it completely black as a silhouette, especially in watercolor. And be careful you don't go too many times over because it can pull your paper up. You'll get little tiny little uh, balls on that and you certainly don't want that because it's very hard to repair afterwards. And that is by learning and practicing over and over again. It's very, very important to do that. I'm going to stop right at this point here and I'm going to add a little bit more uh, you're on my violet in that. Come up and put a little bit of a detail in here, like this. Like here. This particular <coughs> photograph that I had had a lot of trees in the front, and what's important as far as composition as well we add something in the front, make it come out of your picture. And here is where you could also use a fan brush. Uh, I prefer a smaller liner when I'm into a more uh, intricate piece. We add just a few of these for the foreground in here. And when you're using a, a smaller brush, the young, you don't really need as much water on that because you're really using the liner or the small round for in delicate things, very intricate work. So the more water you put on it, the less you're going to be able to, in, to go in for detail. But leave your detail to another time when you feel more comfortable working with this. Let me go and check now. I'm pretty sure that this is, let's try one area here and get some of the, the masking fluid. Now I'm just taking my finger and rubbing it off. And there's my white is appearing. And these are the areas I'd like to keep. And you can go back over that, if you like, with a, a little bit of your brush to add a little bit more color to it. One of the other ways you can do this, let me show you, just take a gum eraser 
and it can grace over top, providing that your paint is dry up here. And you can see the striations that are in here, which is great because our brush, my brush has made that. I'm going to take a little break and wait for another part to dry, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I think most of the masking fluid has just dried, so I can take it off with my finger at this point. When you use the gum eraser, you do have a little more of crumbs here, but I just use this. My finger works just great on this, and it's good and dry, so now I could go back in and leave some places white and add some color to some. We're pretty much cleared off here now with the whiteness. And they look like the clouds are rolling here right now. And most of my watercolor is dry right now, so I can go in. And a lot of watercolors do layers. I don't do a lot of layers, but it's necessary sometimes at some points. And right now, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to add some of the other colors over top of this so that we can complete this picture. Let's add a little bit more of a cloud right in this area. Remember what I said before, clouds come from the west to the east, so we are going to work our way with our strokes more. I'm just kind of going over top of this watercolor. And I hope you're getting the hang of it at home here. It'll be a lot of fun. And let's come down here over top a little bit of this white uh, where... I left it so that another color is going to come in here. And let's go into this. I'm going to leave that white right in there. And a little bit of this. Now, a sky always has lavender in it. And you have to pay attention to that. I'm going to add a little bit of my crimson red to it. Get a little more bright of this coming down this way. I'm actually going over top of some of my uh, white that I left, and that's okay. And I'm going to carefully take my flat brush and over because these clouds are moving this way. Add a little more water here. Just like that uh, graded wash that I showed you. Now we're going to add a little bit more of the blues down in here. It's a great thing to work on skies in watercolor. Uh, they change often and you really get the feel of all of your brushes and things that you're working with. And they're easy to change. And let me do this here. A little bit more dark up here. For this nice cloud that's coming in this way. Coming over. And I'm going to add it down in here. A little bit more pinks. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want everyone to learn to feel of this and to practice p with your paper. Okay, let me come on down to the foreground here. And it's a little more drier, so we can work this our way this way. Many artists work on so many different layers 
of watercolor, and that's okay too, but that's a little more advanced. Uh, we don't want to do that right now for the beginners. And there, let's bring this down here. And hopefully you're getting the feel of how quickly the water dry, watercolor dries or it doesn't dry. So um, it just takes a while to get used to that. Sometimes you have to work fast and sometimes it's better working just fast. Now when we work with a silhouette or anything that is black, we always go and put a little bit of pinks behind this. It helps it not look like it's flat. Uh, we do that in other mediums as well. I do that in my pastels. We just put a little bit of pink through there. And it doesn't look like it's just kind of stuck that will help it. And I kind of use that in my, the watercolors as well. And we just need just a little, little dot that gives it from the glow of the sky down. Now I'm going to take a little break because I need to change my water a bit.